Ah yes, the 90s were cool. You had fantastic cars from a country that probably had way too much money than it knew what to do with. It was almost too perfect. The 90s were too good for Japan. Then you had the 2000s, which is when things started to get a little bit weird. Everybody started getting a little too futuristic. We got to calm that down. The 2010s, everyone thought the world was ending and now you have 2020 where we, it might actually be. We're just not going to we're just not going to get into it. So, the 90s, right, are the place to go for when it comes to cars. Well, right but no because everything from the 90s these days is a lot of, of it's a lot of bloody money okay everything as some might even say it's slightly overpriced but there's a decade of cars that still drives home the same fantastic feeling of nostalgia a decade that laid the framework for the success of the 90s baby welcome to the 80s even better because it came before i'm alex alex set up on instagram and today we're gonna be talking about a car that was the literal creation of the now of affordable sports car class. A car that showed car manufacturers that not everything needed to have bells and whistles and a five-figure death note to essentially make it possible for anyone under the age of 24 to own. A car that had such a good suspension that it is still considered one of the best configurations ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about you wanting to own a Honda CRX. <music> you're wondering what my coffee cup for today is I have a disposable because I ran out and it's Christmas and if you're just jumping into this video Hello. I need more patterns I'm Alex and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels tires or suspension be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com all right where we have everything for your newly acquired CRX or other vehicle that is in need of just maybe four wheels four tires or four suspensions People do say suspensions, that's an actual thing. Because we have it all. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe so you can keep making videos like this. We've also got Black Friday stuff going on all month long. And if that's not enough for your cup of tea, if you want a four course meal, baby, we're also running the BC giveaway right now. You can pick up any of this apparel, it's gonna get you an automatic entry in to win some BC racing coilovers. Black Friday, fitmentindustries.com forward slash Black Friday, giveaway gear, wheels, tires, suspension, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, the Honda CRX is a legacy in and of itself, brought to us by the legendary Honda. Honda is by far one of my favorite manufacturers because of everything that they stand for and did back in the day. The Honda CRX would be a front wheel drive sport compact car granted to our meaningless lives from 1983 to 1991. It'd be replaced by the CRX Del Sol in 92, but that's neither here nor there. The Civic Renaissance Experimental, coined after Honda's internal pre-production name of the car, CRX, was their attempt to produce something that was new invigorating a breath of fresh air to quite literally quote unquote push the envelope all right the design elements were originally taken from the alfa romeo junior zagato maybe depending which the designer of the CRX actually owned one of those. Fun fact for your garage drinking nights. And it was an incredibly popular look back in the day. And because it was Honda, it still managed to get the job done with less. Honda was doing a really good job at really understanding who it needed to become. It had experienced failures in the past with sports cars, but they really started to found some ground with a sport compact class. It would use a 1.3 liter CVCC motor or a 1.5 liter three cylinder with three valves and a five speed manual or Ah, a three speed, a three, it's like a T, um, it's an automatic. I, it's not that I don't like automatics. I just don't like automatics that are only three gears. Unless it's like a 900 horsepower drag car. In which case it just needs two. Slow and fast. That's the only gears it actually needs. The CRX was birthed in Japan, but made its way to the US of A in no time with the American Honda introducing the CRX without the hyphen for the 84 model year, which had the DX, the HF, and the SI model trims. It's important, the little dash is really what signifies a US model spec. This was the age and era of Honda truly becoming what it wanted to be. It was finally 
just strutting its stuff a little bit. The American Division had finally established the Honda Research of America, which would now be their R&D department. It was back in Formula One because it had money. Honda Japan had just won Car of the Year, and now people were immediately infatuated with this tiny, fun, rail riding, front wheel drive CRX SI because it was just a blast to drive. The CRX was based off the Civic chassis, but was smaller, sharper, had a little bit of a bigger chin, and had two less seats. This would not only look in a car that was sharp and performed well, but it was also a doozy of good gas mileage. I mean, the thing just did well. It'd make the EPA proud before they really even cared. In fact, it was known for its gas mileage. And even though the CRX was initially launched by Honda Verno, which is essentially a new age selling technique, pretty much the similar PayPal to Venmo, the technique and the company aimed to revitalize interest in the Honda brand with the younger folk like you and me. No one really noticed, nor did they really care. But they shared so many parts with the Civic that it kept prices down on the CRX and it even kept it reasonable enough with trim options. You were never really breaking the bank with the CRX. It was young, it was hip, it was jazzy, you know? 6599 could get you a 1.5 liter CRX with a zero to 60 to just about 10 seconds. Nearly $2,000 cheaper than the GTI, but just as fast at the time. Now the first generation was cool. It did quite a bit in its own right, but in 1988, they did it even better came in like Matrix 2, except it wasn't trash. There's a few complaints with the CRX, the lack of power, sometimes the lack of quick delivery at top speeds, and the fact that it was a little bit noisy. So Honda completely revamped the engine and suspension that would be brought into the SI model, all right? The 1.6 liter dual overhead ZC engine with fuel injection made the car, made the car fantastic. Pair that with its double wishbone, unequal length, twin A arm arrangement. I did, that was a lot, okay? And you have a banging suspension for a tiny car with a tall hat. The car was well, well developed. The second generation configuration, especially in Japan with the introduction of the VTEC trim option, took this car from just Whoa, it's kind of fun to professional racing, all right? But you would see racers in both US and JDM markets use this car for everything. It was just an iconic car that brought Honda back into the light with an attempt of a true sports car that wasn't really a hot hatch. Like, that wasn't really a class yet. It was a thing, it was a thought, but they didn't really call it that. This would be the inevitable car that taught Honda it could do it right and properly actually inject the idea that would then become the first generation Honda NSX. But we're not here to talk about the history, all right? Even though we do, we're just here to talk about you wanting to own a Honda CRX, all right? If you want the history, go get yourself a Dakota and ask them about Taco Ding Dong, okay? No, we're here to talk about you wanting to know that the, the, what it's like to actually own one of these mean, green, fighting machines, these absolute JDM classics, all right? The cars that are likely to make your mom and dad a JDM fanboy when they were young and now they have Hondas for the rest of your life and you just don't understand why. This is why, all right? So you want a Honda CRX. Well, grab your favorite plastic refresh and drop your favorite five lug wheels because we're about to talk what it's like to actually own one of these. We have fancy lights again. Look at them. They have purple and blue as an Easter egg to Artists of Wheels. Honda CRXs are a legacy. Finding one with the right trim and clean condition is also a little bit of a difficult task. It's possible, sure, but it's just not that easy. But if you do pick one up, there's a few things that you will want to keep in mind when you actually drive this thing. First off, the car is a rust magnet. If you find one, you need to make sure you fix and repair any rust immediately. They were a commuter fun car that was produced in the 80s. What do you expect? It wasn't really meant to stay alive as long as it had and you need to treat it with care too. The headlights can and will be known to fade out over time and if you get ones with the pop-up tech because you brought one in from the overseas it's gonna not work, all right? The car can start to feel worn if it's not consistently replacing its wearable parts. And because the car is so old, there's a tendency for previous owners to forget or just refuse to replace stuff as it gets more expensive. Number two, don't overestimate the car itself. It's a properly fun car that would be considered the symbolic golden age start of Honda, but it's not what you would experience in like a 2016 SI. It's 100 horsepower on a good day. And that's pretending none of it went away over the past 40 years sitting in Florida, collecting terrible $6 t-shirts and door dings. It's 
just, it's not like the same excitement as a new generation excitement. But that doesn't mean it's not exciting. It's just a different kind of exciting, okay? It, I don't know how to explain it. Honda CRXs do best with the simple stuff though, like paint correction, clean, JDM wheels, like Watanabe's, mesh styles, or even some good old Ronals, again, are really just cool wheels to see on this car. And tires from anywhere you can find the sizes because the wheels are generally smaller. While the suspension can be lowered even further with stuff like Tain, Skunk, BC coilovers, or even the typical Eibach lowering springs, we'll do this on the car. It's actually pretty well defined as is. If you can just bring down the aspect ratio of the tires, you're gonna be pretty much set to go. You'll find most of the fun in these things is in the driver's seat on a lonely road with the windows down. They don't really try to hurt you. CRXs are just, they were a great commuter car. They don't try to throw you into a wall. They just try to make you feel connected. It's why the racers of the 80s, 90s, and even nowadays love this platform. It's the reason that all Hondas from the 90s and 2000s feel like this. It's the reason many of the Honda community just loves these cars because it did a lot of things right. It laid the framework on the next generation of cars that everyone would love. You spend time restoring one of these things if you pick one up before you go modifying it though. Clean up the engine bay, do a rebuild, be patient with it because this is one of those cars where if you do that, you'll have it for another 200,000 miles. The car was fantastic as a gas mileage good commuter that also happened to be fun as a sports car and that's inherently what made it so successful. But what do you think about the Honda CRX? Let us know below and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, suspension, oh my knee. Be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.